Hello everyone. Welcome back to .NET Core Central. Today I'm going to create an application which will use nlog to log application logs. Now application logs are very critical to an application because it gives us insight into the health of an application. And nlog is one of the popular logging framework for .NET. Now, when we are building .NET Core applications and we are targeting Docker as a container to run those applications, using traditional method of logging into file system is not viable. The reason for that is the Docker containers are, you know, started and stopped, basically created and destroyed uh, based on the need. And then if we write into a file system of that container, we'll have to have other processes and daemons running, uh, which has to be part of our image, which will be reading this file and sending it to a centralized location. The better option is to use some sort of HTTP call to log those into a centrally logging uh, storage. Now there are quite a few options out there. Uh, most of it is uh, hosted. Today I'm going to try out Splunk, which is both hosted as well as it can be downloaded and installed locally. So I'm going to use the free version of Splunk, which has, of course, limitation on how many MB messages I can log per day, but it is good enough for like smaller application and testing things out. Um, I'm going to use the Docker image, the latest Docker image from Docker Hub for Splunk. So it's going to take some time to install, but the idea of the application that I'm building is going to be using uh, nlog and then setting up the HTTP log collector in Splunk and then using a nlog provider for Splunk, which will help us logging into uh, the Splunk. And then use the Splunk UI to do some search on the logs that we have created. I'm going to push forward this installation process so that you know, we don't have to wait on this. So now the download and installation is complete. So I can do, and I can see the Docker image is created. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start running the container. And for that, I'm going to use Docker Run. Now, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. When we start the container, we have to provide the license argument as well as the password for admin that we'll be using. And apart from that, you know, which port we have to expose. Now, by default, it is on 8,000 port. So we want to make sure the 8,000 port of the container is exposed in the uh, PC as well. And the second thing is uh, HTTP request from the analog uh, goes through an API URL and that is exposed through port 8088. That's the default port. I mean, we can change that configuration after installation, but I'm going to use the same uh, port. So I'm going to expose these two port. And after that, I'm going to provide the arguments from Splunk. One is for license and another one is for the password. And this is the argument where 
I'm going to pass the password for admin. And, and here we are going to provide the password. I'm just going to uh, hide this section or go uh, pause the video during I provide the password and go to the next one. But after that, there is, uh, we will provide the name of the image, sorry, we'll provide the name of the container and the image to pick it up from. I have to change the spelling here. Okay, I'm going to pause, provide the password and run it and we'll come back once the web server is up and running. And as you can see, it is starting up. Looks like I have an error and I have to retry. I was missing a dash D before the dash p so docker run so docker run dash t dash p uh, for the ports and then the splunk arguments so now i'm going to start uh, rerun again so another thing i had to do before i rerun is i had to delete the existing mm -hmm. container because we had i had the container with the same name already running so i just removed it and now i'm going to rerun the command and as i mentioned the in the command i have to give dash d that was something which was missing uh, i'm going to also put all this command in my blog so you can uh, refer it there and as you can see uh, the container is putting up and uh, looks like it's up and running so i'm going to open up um, a browser and try to hit the 8000 url localhost colon 8000 And as you can see, the Splunk is up and running. So once it is up, what we have to do is we have to go into settings and we have to add a HTTP um, listener for uh, for us to be able to log using an HTTP call. So it's an HTTP event collector. I'm going to add new. I'm going to give a name. I'm going to add all the allowed indexes. And then next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the setting for the created uh, HTTP event collector. And then one thing I have to do is in the global setting, I have to enable it. So once I do that, it will give this token and this token is what we'll be using in our code to um, uh, publish the logs.
Okay, now that the Splunk is up, I'm going to go and create a .NET Core application. I'm just going to create a plain and simple console application. Now that the project is created, I'm going to just go and install nlog. Then I'm going to install the Splunk um, targets. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the Microsoft dot extensions for logging and dependency. And uh, then I'm going to create a container configuration file so that I can set up all the um, all the container related tasks, in including uh, the logging. I have to add uh, another NuGet package. I forgot.
so I also need to make sure that uh, I set up the nlog manager to read the log configuration from the nlog config file so for that past I'm going to create a XML file for uh, nlog config and make sure that I set it up to copy into the output directory and then I'm going to get this uh, configuration from the project URL of the Splunk uh, and log Splunk target so I can just go to this uh, github URL And I'm going to just go uh, copy and paste and I'm just going to change here as localhost. So and uh, here I'm going to set up the uh, log manager. Could have named it at nlog.config, but that's okay. Once this is done, I'm going to go into the program.cs. So this should, uh, when I do a get service ilogger of program, it should pick up the n log because I am saying you know logging should be n log, and since I did a load configuration, the n log should be configured before that. Um, and once I do a log info, it should use these. Uh, Splunk logger to log into Splunk. Let's run and see if it works. I don't see anything logging yet. Let me see, I might have made some 
configuration issue or something. I did not pass the appropriate QID. Okay, so after a couple of trial and error, I figured out I had to do a couple of things. First of all, this was here HTTPS. I had to get rid of HTTPS. As I configured Splunk, uh, the port 8080 to be HTTP. And the second thing I had to do is I had to go to setting, data inputs, and go to the HTTP event collector and make sure that my uh, indexing is configured properly. So I had to go here and make sure the indexing is set up to default indexes on the main and in global setting also I set up default index as main. Once I do that I can go and I can see the logs are coming up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
have another log here. So I'll just add the date time. And I'm going to run the program. And then I can go here, go to search and reporting, and I should be able to see uh, my event showing up there. So I can see that the test Plunk is showing up with the host name and the source as you know the demo. So the host name is picked up from here, which is a machine name, thread ID, and the logger, and it takes the uh, log message. And similarly, um, we can use you know throughout the application. Uh, because we injected the logger into the um, because we have injected the logger into the container configuration which means we can use it across uh, the application and just get the logger will get injected uh, using the IOC container and all we have to do is we have to just you know put in some log so I'm going to run this again and go back to search and I should see a new log with the new date time and at this point I can get rid of the tracing for the internal log that I have set up just for debugging uh, as it is working so if I refresh it now I can see another log created with the current time so this is uh, how we can use Plunk with uh, .NET Core and uh, in this case, this application can be running inside the container and it should work the same because you know it's just an HTTP endpoint. So this is what I have for today. I know I had to go through a little bit of struggle here to ensure that uh, the log was crunching. But uh, apart from that, one, once you know that, I think it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward how Splunk works. I think the main thing is how we set up the um, HTTP log collector. If it is set up correctly, you know, it's pretty straightforward on how to use it from .NET Core. So that will be the end of the video. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind is one thing we need to, we have to make sure in global setting we enable it and we set up the index properly, both in the global setting as well as the HTTP event collector we created. And once we do that, and uh, I had HTTPS disabled, so all I had to do is in the default config that I downloaded from the uh, website uh, of the um, nlog and Splunk handler, I just had to remove the S from here. So just keep HTTP and provide the appropriate token. Once these two are provided, it works like uh, it works as expected. So with that, uh, let me go back. So we can see uh, the events are indexed as expected. And that should be it for today. Uh, please provide me your feedback and comments in the comment below. If you want me to cover some other topic, please leave me a comment below and I will try to cover that in uh, my next week's video. Thank you so much for watching.